Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the adventures of Arendil. Currently exploring some farmland here on the outskirts of Corinth, a city in central elsewhere. We can see the city walls right there. And we will soon be traveling to the halls of Colossus to seek the fourth piece of the Staff of Chaos, as we can see in our logbook. According to your continental map, the Forgotten Halls of the Colossus lies in elsewhere. <laughs> okay, not very descriptive, but uh, fair enough. And if you are curious, this name, Elsewhere, it has been confirmed by people involved in the early design phases of this game that that was really meant to just be kind of a placeholder name. It really did come from the English word Elsewhere. Anyway, so that's kind of amusing. Last time we went to the Temple of Achamanus. This time we are headed here. Nine days of travel. Let's get started. You stand before the gigantic walls of the Halls of Colossus, built by giants in an age long past. The wind echoes mournfully through the empty battlements. Here lies the fourth piece of the Staff of Chaos. You enter the secret passage to the Hall of Colossus. The floor here is covered in a fine mold, scratched by large, sharp claws, and the air is warm and moist. Okay. Very interesting description. And what is the deal with this corpse here? On this body you find a hastily scribbled note. It speaks of finding six keys to unlock the secret of the halls. <laughs> secret of the halls. These keys, according to a crude map, seem to be scattered about this level. A red X is scribbled on a spot directly north of here. It's north of here, huh? Now, I wonder if that's... Uh, I, I don't know, I'm kind of curious to find out if that's a little bit of a mistake, because uh, I wonder if they actually need to be referring to area directly ahead of us here, which would actually be west. We shall find out. In any case, I wonder if we can access this corpse. Ooh, yes we can. Torque. Plate boots. What kind of torque is that? And if you're not familiar, a torque is kind of a... Uh, uh, it's kind of like a special kind of necklace, I guess you could say. I mean, it's not a necklace, but it's worn around the neck. It's like a bit of metal with uh, small openings. You can kind of, you know, just maybe bend it slightly to get it around your neck and then bend it closed again. I believe that's the idea. Minus one. Okay, it's not a very valuable one. I'm going to search west, first of all. Oh, and the body disappeared. Okay. Hello, lizard man. I believe I heard the sounds of skeletons. So a clan of lizard men has taken up refuge or residence here in these strange halls. I wonder who else lives here. The sounds of those lizard men are definitely interesting. Um, let's see. So this probably has nothing. Just a very old corpse, old pile of bones. So, okay, we weren't seeing much here. Oh, so there are some stairs. And I guess I'll also note on my map that here we found a note. 
Um, let's just take a glance here. The dead air in the Hall of Colossus is dry and stinks of decay. In the quietude of the chamber, you can hear the scuffling of many feet. Red eyes stare out at you from the gloom. Yes, the red eyes of rats, apparently. We have some interesting columns here. Let's risk a little more light. Now this is definitely reminiscent of that moment in the film of the Lord of the Rings when Gandalf reveals the dwarven city of Derodelf, or whatever it's called, down in the mines of Moria. What is it? Dwerodelf? Something like that. So this dungeon design is already very different from most of what we've seen before. Orcs. You should not have meddled with us, Orcs. Gained a level of experience. Four bonus points, okay, that's acceptable. Go ahead and just put all those into intelligence. Get some more spell points. And let's see, I'm gonna drop a few things. So we have multiple stairwells leading up and down between these two levels. That's very interesting. We still have plenty of shielding. Might be good to take advantage of this spot and recharge our shields all the same. All right. It's always a nice touch when there are roots coming down through the ceiling. This is surely an area with rich history and many mysteries. Erendil finds himself feeling very excited, despite himself, about the possibility of discovering interesting bits of uh, ancient art, ancient writing, and of course, in simply seeing more details of all this very ancient architecture. The lore text suggested that this was built by giants. <laughs> I assume they mean, of course, just certain portions of it, perhaps the above-ground portions, primarily. Presumably many others have affected the state and nature of this place, above ground and below, over the centuries, including orcs, lizardmen, and who knows how many others. Hmm. 
It's always amusing to me when we see these uh, diagonal walls that we can kind of walk behind. Now, I don't think I'll engage in any past wall shenanigans yet, but uh, soon. Of course, in my case, I have my own custom wall destruction spell which I've simply named Destroy Wall, so... Uh, that's how you'll see it listed in my spell list, but uh, the classic name for it is Pass Wall. Very important and very cool spell. It's one of the great things about this game is some of the uh, unique environment-altering spells that you have, such as Pass Wall and Pitfall for destroying walls and floors. And there's also spells for uh, creating walls and floors. You can do some interesting things with those spells sometimes. So one of these days I might do a video where I just show some of the uh, funny experiments you can do with that. I believe there's a way that you can sort of create a dungeon by creating walls in certain parts of the wilderness. Like I think if you create walls maybe above a hole in the ground or something like that. I forget the exact details, but I remember reading something about that in the past. Anyway, let's go ahead and destroy a wall here. Sorry to disturb you, Orc. Also, sorry to disturb the uh, integrity of this priceless ancient ruin, but uh, but you know the way things work in this game. Those destroyed walls, they actually come back if you uh, leave this level and then come back. So that being the case, I suppose we don't need to feel too bad about it. So it's almost like it is, as that name Pass Wall suggests, it's more like you're passing through the wall or making it temporarily possible for anything to pass through the wall, including enemies, uh, rather than actually destroying the wall in any permanent sense. shed a little more light on this situation. We can see hints of blue in the rock. I wonder if that could even be Mithril. or some other precious ore or gems. So we have a secret door here, one of these. Interesting.
It'd be a miracle if you picked this lot. Well, I believe in miracles. Okay, this one truly is tough. Even for one as intelligent and skillful as Arendula has become at this point in his life. So, we will resort to some magic. Failure. There we go. So even by magic, Arendil had to attempt twice. That was a fancy lock indeed. And we have treasure here. This one Arendil picks quite easily. And we have another torque. We have another difficult lock here. Make a few mundane attempts. And then... Magic. Cast some fire. Now he has some more treasure chests to unlock. One of them is a bit tougher. We have a key. A gold key. So that's the first key we've discovered. Let's go ahead and rest up here.
now we have a locked secret door. Now let's try to get the lock, and there we go. Arendel gets the impression that he should expect many locked doors and secret passages in this interesting ruin. So this takes us back to where we found that note, and the body seems to have returned. Six keys. Hmm. So that X it was referring to directly north, maybe I was referring to right here, where we found a gold key. More lizard men. Hello. This stone here is also very interesting. Seems to have notes of gold or bronze or something. Well, I shouldn't say bronze, but you know, gold or copper or something else like that. Although copper would probably show up uh, blue, possibly. Depends on the exact chemical makeup of the stone. Let's see here. Let's check this area first. Sometimes, even a seemingly simple lock can prove difficult. Lizard man, I presume.
more secret doors. Hoping we might find another key here, but it looks like no such luck. Now we're stuck in geometry. Great. Oh, there we go. approaches. We should explore a bit more of this northern area. Then head south. pedestal or table or altar or whatever these things are meant to be. Doesn't seem to be anything more to see up north, so down south we'll go. Interesting layout. Now, oh, I see. Just head directly south for a while. See what there is to see. We should find one or two more stairways, I presume. where we first faced some orcs. Let's go ahead and plow through this wall.
Hi there. And farewell, my cold-blooded friend. Ah, another key. An iron key. So we picked just the right wall to destroy there. And I suppose you could say we paid the iron price for that iron key. For we have already had to slay many on our way here. So we're at level 16. With each increase of level, many of our spells become more powerful. Our fire spell is already quite formidable, as well as our other elemental spells. Interesting platforms here. Ah, and some gates or cell doors. Might be good to get some rest sometime soon. Perhaps not quite yet. Okay, I hadn't paid close attention before, but we do see up, up here the uh, symbol of the golden key, and then also a little iron key beneath it. I was curious as to how they would handle the depiction of the multiple keys that we might be picking up here. Um, it's kind of fun that they are of not just a different color, or even of a slightly different shape, but also a different size. Good on them. I very much approve of a lot of the visual and sound design choices made in this game. Not 100% of them, but very close. Maybe 90%. And what have we here? Oh, just gold. And no secret doors. So it looks as though we've pretty thoroughly explored this level, so the additional keys must be on the next level. Perhaps even multiple additional levels.
So we may as well go ahead and descend once again and more fully explore that lower level. We'll go through our makeshift passage here. Take these stairs. More rats. Of course. I love the look and layout of this place. The higher ceiling. The giant columns. Very nice. It's just too bad it's infested with rats at this point. central room we have here. Okay, another stairway. Ah, so we do have more here. Interesting. I wonder if Passwall could have gotten me through. Probably. Should take care of you. It's very menacing and unpleasant the look of these chains and manacles dangling from the ceiling. This is not a place where I would enjoy being prisoner. Not that there are many places where one would enjoy being prisoner, but you know, some are better than others. noises. I wonder if these ghouls themselves used to be prisoners here, or if they were simply summoned to torment prisoners. But we don't see any current prisoners, so who knows. This is an interesting room. Very cool. Let's go to all 
the edges and make sure we uh, flush out our map as well as we can. I like to check out those kinds of objects now and then, even though I'm pretty confident that they never do anything in this game. You know, same with pillars and whatnot. This is not quite like Daggerfall, where in Daggerfall, you never know if anything might be a trigger for a trap or a secret door or, or a magical effect, any number of possibilities. Explore that area with the uh, the deep recesses. I wonder if there was tunneling, mining going on here, or what. I'm not sure why these recesses exist. I mean, another possibility is simply that this was part of the original natural structure of this place. There may have been some natural caverns already here, and then they sort of dug tunnels near them um, and around them. You know, just uh, these cavernous regions may have been discovered just by accident while they were tunneling into this place. walls might be indestructible. Let's test that out. Failure. Sure enough. Oh, that one can be destroyed. But not these. Not the ones that show up in gray here on the map. Take care of these three. Let's see. Nice. Another corpse. Recent corpse, I mean. We still, of course, have several of these more ancient ones. But that one is more fresh.
Be on our note. Well, there's a key over there. Hmm. Okay, no note on this one. I was expecting something like that. But uh, nothing so special. We have here an interesting sarcophagus. What key might this be? Diamond key. There it is, lovely. So we found three keys so far. Interesting that some of this coloration here on the ground below is different. I don't know exactly why that would be, but uh, it's interesting. Perhaps there was technically a different type of ground tile used there, but it might make no difference since we can't see it. Um, anyway. Yeah, I should go explore that area. Games like Arena and Daggerfall. Well, you better enjoy dungeon delving. If you don't enjoy this sort of thing, well, this is not the right game for you. I, for one, love it, obviously. I don't necessarily love all types of dungeon crawlers, but this type I definitely do. You know, the Elder Scrolls series where they combine dungeon crawling and other sort of classic RPG elements with action game elements. I really like that combination. I do also like other types of RPGs in many cases. You know, ones that are more turn-based or uh, might have various different approaches to the uh, 
visual design, control design, overall game design. <laughs> oh, we got another ghoul trying to get at me. But uh, this type does tend to be my favorite overall. You know, the Elder Scrolls series in general is uh, what I would generally refer to as my favorite series of all time. At the very least, it certainly includes my number one favorite game of all time, Morrowind, as I've mentioned before. That's my absolute favorite, but I do have a lot of love for Arena and Daggerfall, and Oblivion, and of course Skyrim. There's a lot of good things to be said about Skyrim. I guess I hadn't explored the room here yet. So, might as well do that before moving on. Another recent corpse with no note. I wonder how frequently adventurers end up here, trying our luck as they attempt to plumb the secrets of this interesting room. Interesting but deeply dangerous room. Dangerous for the average adventurer, anyway. Not so much for Arendil at this point. Now, why is this not opening? There we go. Our light spell has run out. And we will soon be out of Magicka. Or spell points, as they're called in this game. Hello there. Sighting of subterranean water so far in this dungeon. Minotaur, I say. Interrupting my sleep.
now with enemies right here. Well, none that I see, so they must be in an adjoining room somewhere nearby. So we'll go ahead and plunge into this water. More sarcophagi, <laughs> or at least another sarcophagus anyway. And another key. Sapphire. Beautiful. I wonder who has been buried here. Were they men or mare? Other folk, difficult to say. Interesting that the wall looks different. Ah, sure enough, a secret door. Okay, let's go ahead and explore that area then. opened chest. Inventory's full. A zombie back there. We're greeting this foul zombie. Let's see if I can get you with a fire blast. It would seem that took care of you.
nasty zombies. At least I can kill them quickly at this point. They used to give Arendil a lot of trouble. But no more. Now that he has gained far more mastery of magic, of the arcane and elemental arts. And has increased all of his attributes. Even beyond what would normally be natural for him, thanks to the Ogma Infinium and the forbidden knowledge it contained. Hopefully that will not have any ill effects on our friend, the High Elven Mage Eärendil. stairway. I guess we haven't explored that area yet. once again, risk a little more light. Where are you? Gotcha.
bit of a strong spell. Let's go with some fire. I was trying to pick a lock on that zombie or magically open him. That's a gross thought. Disease. That's great. I have yellow fever. Thank you so much, zombie. Let's go ahead and uh, cure disease. Okay, I might as well go explore that area. And... Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe there isn't actually anything there. Perhaps that's deceptive right there. Well, let's do a little bit of wall destroying just to be sure. We still have blood-stained floors here for some reason. bit of vacant space here. Very interesting.
very odd that there should be this slightly open yet inaccessible storage space of some kind that, you know, perhaps there were mages that would magically access this space in much the same way I just did. But if it were something like that, you would expect there to still be some valuable artifacts here. No such luck. Moving on. Might as well break through some walls here. While we're at it, not enough spell points, okay. Show the rest here. Oh. stairs. Even these doors are larger than usual. Taller than usual, I should say.
we have a more normal-sized column. I think the columns down in the lower level are not only taller, but maybe a little bit wider, too. I hope I haven't missed a key in any obscure place. Of course, I haven't even yet seen the location where I need any of these keys. It's on the lower level somewhere. some ranged light. Now I seem to recall there was a way to get down underneath part of the ground there. So let's go ahead and check that out. Yes indeed. That's the first one of those we've seen here in this dungeon.
There's your buddy. Trolls. Miserable, no good Robin trolls. As the dwarves said in the uh, old cartoon version of The Hobbit. Let's have us a nice fire blast. I hear another troll. See you though. So on we go.
Zombie. Let's see if I can get him from the water. Not with that spell. How about a ranged fire spell? Yep. Nice candle holding vigil near this corpse. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, yeah, might as well explore this a little bit before continuing with that waterway. What the? Why did I hear water? Right there, that was funny. some walls.
A, the sixth and final key. Amethyst. Lovely. It's definitely the first time I've seen that particular key icon. That's a lot of zombies. Let's do a little fire blast. Let's also check on the condition of my items. So we found two enchanted plate homes so far, that's nice. Let's drop some of these. Okay, my buckler and dagger are still in almost new condition. That's nice. them repaired before starting this video. Because they typically get down to used status. By the time I'm done with the long dungeon. Though I am mostly relying on spells at this point. Who goes there? Ah, hello. So we have our six keys. Soon we will proceed back down to the lower level to more fully explore it. And perhaps be done with this place once and for all. I suppose I am a bit curious to see if that water goes anywhere. So we'll see if there might be a bit more worth exploring over here.
Oh my, I believe that is some kind of fire daedra. What are you? What are you called? A fire demon. So in other words, yes, a type of daedra. Daedra and demon, I believe, are basically interchangeable terms or concepts in the Elder Scrolls universe. Um, let's go ahead and cro uh, cast some powerful frost magic. It's about to say crossed some frost magic. Uh, come on, there we go. Gotcha. That probably gave me a lot of experience. to fire demon. It's almost like facing a Balrog, I suppose. Maybe not quite that bad. Oops, didn't quite make the jump there. What's going on? Ah, uh, uh, hi there. Well, we can just cast Frost again, I suppose. There is an inscription engraved here on the moss-caked stone. Theodorus. Interesting. Theodorus. Greetings. This was definitely interesting. Theodorus. Instead, I wonder what the significance of that name is. Okay, that should do it. Our curiosity was somewhat rewarded here, although that's still a bit of a mystery. that inscription all about.
Down we go. After resting, that is. This is a lot of rats. Wonder what they've been feeding on down here. Perhaps the occasional orc or lizard man or other unwary adventurer. So we've got a major door there, clearly. We'll look up here a little bit first. Hmm. Interesting. one stairway we haven't used yet. Hello. A minotaur through the secret door.
another key. Another amethyst key. Okay. Interesting. Not sure how I feel about this. I thought I was only looking for six keys. One thing I do wish this game might have more of in terms of, you know, depth and options and so forth would be, uh, I wish it had more of the elements in Ultima Underworld. You know, it'd be nice to find places where you have communities of goblins or orcs, lizard men and others, where you could talk to them, maybe become friends with them, do little quests for them instead of them just always being enemies. That would be nice. Ultima Underworld is another game that I still have yet to play through all the way to the ending. 
I need to do that one of these days. So, okay. Explored all of this northern region. I do have a bit here. Hmm. A little bit there, a little bit there in terms of south and western regions. Where we could do a bit more exploring. Hello. Pardon the surprise. Okay, who's over there playing around with the door? Come on, the wall work. No need for that. What the heck? Are you stuck in the wall? Sleep on the wall work. Okay, time to put him out of his uh, misery here. Man. Almost made it to me.
And the great elf warrior is loose. Okay, more of an elf mage, but still. Arendil is a formidable warrior in his own right, to some extent. And that line, some of you may have recognized, the line of the great elf warrior is loose. That is from Samwise Gamgee in the cartoon version of The Return of the King. When he was fantasizing about being an elf warrior. Alright, so I suppose I want to explore this area a bit more. So I'll do some wall destruction over here. That's right. I think I remember being here before. And now we'll finally explore this area and hopefully be done with level one of this labyrinthine dungeon. Well, this part is somewhat labyrinthine anyway. A little bit. The lower level, not so much. More of a grand hall. Possibly even large enough for giants back in the day. Although how they would have gotten there is another question. Perhaps the entire layout of this place used to be different. Who knows? Very interesting shield designs. These lizard men have the uh, the skull and some uh, text of some kind. Okay. 
Okay, I think this will pretty much do it. Okay, what does it say on your shields? Let me see. Don't have enough time to try to read that. Anyway, interesting stuff. So, okay, there might be a bit more there. Fine. I guess I do recall when I was uh, exploring that waterway, didn't always explore these areas north of it. So I found the ruby key here by these hellhounds. Treasure has respawned. Oh, my goodness. The key has respawned as well. Now I don't think that's why I got two amethyst keys, right? <laughs> that was definitely a new one. Uh, the other amethyst key was right there, yeah. But yeah, I want to be careful here. It's possible that picking up the ruby key another, you know, a second time, that might cause undesirable effects, so I'm not going to tempt fate with that. We are not on a bug hunting expedition, or exploit hunting expedition. zombie. Come on, why is the spell? There we go. That's all there is here. Although, well, there's a room there that I guess I haven't explored yet. Now, what if I try to destroy some walls from here? Never tried this before. There we go. Actually, I might have experimented with something like this a little bit once before, but uh, not very extensively. So good to know that that's very straightforward. 
as another way to get into rooms from the water. Oh, hello, zombie. should be done at this point. I don't think there are any rooms there. That's all just walls. Unexplored walls. <laughs> no thanks, troll. I tried to camp right here in the middle of this large room. Actually, that worked out. I think it's a nice visual atmosphere they've created here with this level. With this entire dungeon. The Halls of Colossus, they're definitely interesting. Now we've got a uh, raised passageway there, but first things first. Let's go ahead and check out this door. This lock seems to be made of iron. You open the door with iron key. Okay. So... So I guess... There are these alternative passageways, or maybe that's just a way out. Oop. Might be stuck in geometry now. Let's not be permanently stuck, please. But even if we are, we did save just barely, so... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and load. So I guess it won't let you climb up here. Okay, I wasn't sure about that. 
there might still be ways to get around this with pass wall. Not on that particular wall, but uh, it seems these ones you could. So I can't destroy that, but I can destroy this. <laughs> so yeah, you can probably get through this dungeon without collecting all of those keys, it looks like. <laughs> but we did collect them, so here we go. Iron key. So these were primarily intended as a way to get out. If... Well, anyway, that's interesting. Gold key. This lock is encrusted with rubies. So there's that. And yeah, sure enough, you've got these uh, sort of steps to go up and out of heat. Like, I guess, <laughs> I mean, that still seems somewhat pointless, but maybe if you got through with pass wall and then you changed the levels up ahead, came back out, and you didn't want to deal with casting pass wall again, then you might be, might be grateful for all these steps to get out an alternative way, but I don't know, it still seems a little funny. Not sure, not sure they were fully thinking through their uh, level design here. <laughs> Um, interesting. Or, of course, I might just be missing part of their uh, concept. Anyway, diamond studded lock. Speaking of them possibly not fully thinking through the level design, did they really give me a superfluous extra amethyst key? We shall see. Sapphire key. We have a stairway leading down. So, well, that's that. A deeper level of the Halls of Colossus. And here the ceiling continu uh, continues to be a bit higher, which again might suggest that this is indeed one of the parts of this dungeon that was previously inhabited by giants. Amethyst key, okay. I am the architect of this hell, whose name is forgot in the dust of time. Yet where there is no dust, where the river would speak, there is my name. Find this place and then return to tell me my name. Only then shall you pass this door. What is my name? Okay, so in this case, this isn't really a riddle per se. This is more just a magical barrier where you have to have already discovered the inscribed name of this person, the architect of this place. And I seem to recall that it is Theodorus. Theodorus. Theodorus is my name. Pass, child, and beware the halls ahead. Okay, good to know. And sure enough, I fear that I might be carrying an extra amethyst key now. We'll see about that. Hopefully it will find use at some point. We have a secret door here. Ah, 
ever seen a, uh, a column <laughs> through a gap in the ceiling up there. It would be pretty funny if we ended up stuck with that extra amethyst key icon there for the whole rest of my playthrough. Hopefully that won't be the case. If any of you have actually watched all of my videos, uh, you may recall that previously in, I believe it was Celine's Web, I had a funny issue where I picked up a sapphire key, maybe a diamond key, I don't recall, after having already opened the relevant lock through an open spell. And so I had that icon following me, and I ended up resolving that by actually going back and playing through that last part of the dungeon again, just in case, just to make sure that that icon wouldn't continue following me forever. Uh, because I'm really not sure. It, it's possible that it might. I mean, maybe not. Maybe when you go into a new major dungeon that also involves keys, maybe it will then finally erase all other old or superfluous key icons. I don't know. But in the future, we may find out. So here, we have another riddle, a true riddle this time, although a strange one. Fortunately, this is one that has already been spoiled for me. I already had seen this explained somewhere in the past. So, um, anyhow, here it goes. Answer me this, and prove thy wit, for a true challenge is rare indeed. I am twice as old as three times the age of the Sphinx of Gazia, Agamemnus, divided by one ninth the age of the Sphinx of Canis, Igon, who left this world twenty-six years ago. What then is my age? Okay, so first of all, I have to say, I do not consider this a very good riddle. If you do not want it spoiled, then please stop watching or skip ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you what the idea is here, because you might very well be wondering, there's all this talk of twice as old as three times the age of blah blah blah. First of all, it's interesting to see sphinxes referenced in the Elder Scrolls. This is unusual, it's not a common mythical creature that you see referenced in Elder Scrolls games. But uh, we also see this name Agamemnus, that seems to be perhaps a slight typo, or uh, maybe typo is the wrong term. Let's just say this is an alternative spelling of a name. Uh, we saw in the previous video the Temple of Agamemnus. Well, in this case, they've added an extra M in there, so it's Achamandus. But anyway, that Temple of Achamandus was indeed dedicated to this Sphinx. Now, the Sphinx Igon, we're told, left this world 26 years ago, doesn't tell us anything about the Sphinx's age. But that number 26 is a clue. Because 26, that's the number of letters in the alphabet. So that thought will get you on the right track. But... <laughs> The way to get the answer is still very strange. Apparently, you're supposed to take the letters in each of these names, and when you add up the sort of numerical value, so to speak, of where that letter is in the alphabet, well, that gives you the age of that sphinx. Okay? That's the idea. Like I said, I don't consider this a good riddle because I feel like that's the kind of thing where it doesn't really logically follow from anything that's written here. It's more just kind of a bizarre puzzle where you have to be just kind of lucky to be thinking along the same line of thought that the puzzle writer was thinking and but it's but it's really just not something that's clear or logical from the text of the puzzle itself so not a great riddle but the answer apparently is 108 which you can type like this or I believe I recall reading that you can also just type it out this way. 108. You are free to enter, child, but be warned, there be devils within. Well, I will heed that warning. Let's see, I'll save this here. Pedestals hang in the air in this room. Defying all laws, your senses are alert to the acrid stench of brimstone and to the whirring of leathery wings. Okay. A very 
very interesting place, to be sure. Oh, hello. Homunculus. Wonder what kind of spells you might cast. Huh. Or perhaps they just use physical attacks, I don't recall. Oh, there's definitely some shock damage going on. It might be good for me to go ahead and use a potion of resist shock. There we go. Hmm. A loot pile that we cannot access. I seem to recall reading that that can exist in one or two of the dungeons of this game. Try again from here. Okay, it's just decorative, that's fine. Moving on. Yeah, some of these columns are definitely larger than others. Oh, hello. How do you like it? Boom. Ah, there it is. The fourth piece of the Staff of Chaos fastens itself to the other three in a flash of blue light. The staff is now half complete. Beautiful. Let's see what else there is to see here. Lots of strange floating platforms indeed. Interesting room. So yeah, we had lost our shielding there, apparently. Huh. Might be a bit safe to rest here. We'll see. You have recovered the fourth piece. I honor your bravery. Listen closely now, my friend, for Thorn has begun in earnest to look for you. Do not fear. He does not know your true identity, but he can sense the staff's power. With four of the eight pieces, you stand out like a lantern at night. I urge you to caution. The fifth piece of the staff lies in an ancient stronghold of sorcery called the Crystal Tower. It was said that the southern tip of the dragon's teeth, which stretches from the ice-covered mounts of high rock, 
to the wooded forest of Valenwood could be seen on the horizon from the top parapet of the tower. This would lead me to believe it is not far south of the majestic mountain range. You must find the tower and gain access to recover the fifth piece of the Staff of Chaos. Okay then. here that we hadn't run into yet. Who's attacking me from down there? How dare you. Oh, and I see that the, uh, the icon for that extra amethyst key did seem to disappear. I wonder if that happened right when I got the uh, piece of the Staff of Chaos, or when that might have happened, I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and check sometime. So yeah, it was somewhere around here. Staff piece. Guarded by several homunculi. Get out of here. Maybe I can rest here. So for this section at least, they were careful to uh, not let you just use Passwall to get through. Maybe. Actually, you might still be able to manage to do it, perhaps. No, probably not. No, you would still definitely need to uh, answer that riddle to get that door to open from any direction. So, interesting. I guess we might as well move on.
And when we rest again, we should get another vision, this time from Jagar Tharn. So that should be interesting. I wonder what enemy he might send our way this time. Oh, no vision yet. Fair enough. Well, let's see, which of these these stairs should we use? Perhaps the main one down this way. So many rat corpses. And here we go. We can go ahead and head on out. And based on the description we got from Ria Silmain, it seems to me that the Somerset Isle, Arendil's homeland, should be our next destination. But we will save all of that for next time. So for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this little jaunt through this dungeon. I try to make these videos basically just just nice, chill, dungeon-crawling videos. <laughs> and, um, yeah, if you enjoyed it at all, please do give the video a like. And please consider subscribing to my channel, and also supporting me at patreon.com slash thedrake. That supports not only my video production hobby, but also my indie game development, under the name Golden Drake Studios. And anyway, I hope you take excellent care of yourself and everyone around you, and that you'll tune in next time for more adventures of the High Elven Mage Eärendil. I'll see you next time.